Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com, and today I'm unboxing and using the Mailtrix V3 Arduino Spot Welder. Now you guys have probably seen me using the Sunco Spot Welders a lot, but I wanted to try out this Arduino Spot Welder because I've heard good things about Mailtrix, so I figured I'd open it up, assemble it, and try it out with you guys so you can see how it works. Alright, let's check it out. Now it comes with a whole pile of parts here. I got the one that runs off a LiPo battery, so here's the LiPo battery connector. And I got one of these uh, Turnigy uh, 3S LiPo batteries, and this is a high discharge one. It's 60 to 120 C. They recommend at least 60 C discharge, so I got this bad boy. Here are the welding cables, the foot switch, the Arduino spot welder itself. Pretty sure these are for the car battery version, but I got them just in case I want to run this off of a car battery. And then there's this nice 3D printed case that goes over the spot welder and the fuse and the fuse holder and some assorted bolts and such. All right, now I have no idea how to assemble this thing, but I'm going to try and follow the instructions they have on the website and let's see if we can assemble this. All right, so it looks like you start by taking the actual spot welder boards apart. All right, so you put these bolts in the four corners followed by these nylon nuts. You gotta go easy with these nuts because they're just nylon, you don't want to crack them. All right, once you have the second nylon nut on there, you want to slide this back together. Okay, and then you unscrew these nuts so that they're down to that second printed circuit board there. And then you just add one more nut on the end of each of these bolts. And I know people are gonna ask, so if you're wondering how much this costs, the actual spot welder kit was about 75 euros or so. And then there's another 10 or 15 euros in accessories, like if you want the cables and stuff. So it comes out to around 100 euros or so, I'd say, by the end, which is a bit less than a lot of the Sunco welders, and this should be much higher quality. All right, now it looks like we take this red silicone wire and we strip a little bit off of each end. And then for some reason we skip to the foot switch here. And we're going to connect it to this white connector, so I guess I need to pull out my soldering iron. And I'm not sure which wires are the correct ones for the switch, but we can test that. I'll use the continuity tester on my digital multimeter. Alright, so this is normally closed, so I don't think we want that. Let's try black to red. Let's try red to blue. There we go. I'm just going to snip off the black because we don't need that. And apparently there's no polarity, so it doesn't matter which one of these we connect. We're just closing a simple circuit here. And now we need the negative welding cable to be mounted here. All right, so then I mount the fan in the holder. Now I take the red silicone wire and I twist it together with the fan wire. And that goes in the left block here, which is the 12 volt positive. Oh man, I'm not sure if I have a small enough screwdriver for there. Now the black wire goes on the minus side. I broke the tip off my knife a long time ago on accident and now it makes a great tiny flathead. All right, now we need this XT90 and we're going to screw the negative side to the U-shaped aluminum part. And then the top half of the case goes on here. Got to stuff all the wires in there. So stuffing this all together is a little easier said than done. Then we can use all this hardware to put it together. All right, once the case is together, we have to put the rotary encoder knob on. All right, and now we'll do the fuse case. I'm going to add these M5 nuts, and then washers go on top of those. And then our fuse goes on top. Then we're going to put a brass washer on top, and then we're going to connect this to the positive output of the battery. And then we're going to do the same thing with the positive welding wire, but we're also going to slide this red silicone wire from the case in here with it. And now we can close this up. So now we can plug in the foot pedal, and we should be ready to go. All right, now let's plug this thing in. I've got my LiPo here. All right, nothing exploded. I hear the fan has started up. 
and then I'm getting options for my weld settings. All right, so if we turn this rotary knob, we can get a different duration of the weld pulse. Let's try starting out with like a 10 millisecond pulse and see what happens. Let's try and pull these apart. All right, so I was able to pull those apart with some resistance, but let's see if we can get a bit of a stronger weld than that. So I'm going to go 15. Let's see how that goes. All right, let's try and pull those apart. Right, so those are pretty strong. Let's try bumping up to 20 and see what happens. All right, so I felt like that was a stronger pulse there. All right, so that's like a nice good weld there. That's, yeah, that one's tough to pull apart. Yeah, I'm having trouble pulling that apart. There we go. And right, I'm going to do some testing on some cells here. I'm just going to drop back down to 15 or so with the first test and see how this goes. All right, so I can't pull that off by hand. That's a good sign. And it's tough to pull it off with a tool. And if you look here, you can see I'm basically ripping the nickel as I'm pulling off the nickel strip. And that's what you want to see for a good weld. You want the two metals to basically be joined together such that you're going to rip a piece of the nickel off when you pull it off. So let's do some more practices here. Oh yeah, that looks beautiful. Look at that. Oh, those are beautiful welds. If I try to pull these apart, oh, I actually got one there. All right, so I was able to pull that one off by hand. If I look, I can still see artifacts of the welds there. So it looks like the weld was pretty strong. But maybe we'll try up in this just a little bit. Let's go like 17 milliseconds on those welds. Let's try another couple here. All right. Yeah, so that's difficult to pull off by hand again. So I can, if I really pull on it, I can yank it off. Now, it's reasonable that you'd be able to pull these off by hand. I mean, you can't expect to get such a good weld on there that you'll never be able to rip it off if you're decently strong. But the fact that I'm leaving pieces of nickel on the cell is definitely a good sign. That's what you want to see to make sure you're actually really welding those metals together and you're not you're not just getting a little bit of sort of surface connection that you're really joining those so this looks like it's doing a really good job welding here so I'm really happy with how that's working out same thing over here it's I don't know if you can see this but you're definitely getting these little nubs on here which is the artifact of that weld all right, so this has been a really fun experiment. I'm really happy with this uh, Mailtrix spot welder, and I'm definitely gonna be using this for my welding going forward because it's just a much nicer welder. I can dial it in exactly how I want it, and it's just a much more convenient package to use. When it comes time to recharge, I can just charge my LiPo battery on any balance charger, like an IMAX B6, and I don't even have to worry about being plugged into the mains power. Uh, a lot of people have problems with those Sunco welders because when you're plugged into the mains, if you pull a big pulse, it can actually trip your circuit breaker. And I know that's a problem I had with a number of units. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Last but not least, time to announce the winner of last week's book giveaway. And the winner is... Dennis. So congratulations, Dennis. Shoot me a message, let me know where to send your book, and also which one of my books you'd like. DIY lithium batteries, if you want to learn more about building lithium ion batteries, like what I've been doing here. DIY solar power, or the ultimate do-it-yourself e-bike guide. And as always, if you'd like to win one of my books, all you have to do is put a comment below this video, anything you want to say, and hopefully you'll be the randomly chosen commenter at the end of my next video. Alright, thanks for watching guys, see you next time.